Now let's talk about rules. Like I told you, there are four rules of WOW designs and just to understand them, I need to, needed to explain this color wheel first. So first rule is follow the line. As you can see, there are actual lines. So there are colors within the circle and there are also lines. So if you take any line, let's take this one, okay, like light yellow. And if we will follow the line, then all colors that lie within this line will definitely match. For example, if you take dark olive, yellow, light yellow, pastel yellow, they will match, as well as white. Actually, white is in the center, so it matches everything, as well as the black, so it's pretty easy. Uh, so that means you can take all colors from this range and white and black, and they will match. It's pretty easy, I think, yes? Okay, the next one is it's better to use maximum two colors. And these rules are about colors of rhinestones. And by colors, I mean you can take only one color from the wheel. For example, let's take yellow and let's take blue. And it doesn't mean that you can't use the colors from this line. So you can take any yellow or you can take all of them. You can take any blue or all of them together and mix and match. And by, by the way, these rules are about, um, so what I'm saying is that if you break them or if you will do some design that do not follow this rule, it doesn't mean that necessarily it will be something bad or wrong. Actually, in creative uh, world, I believe there's no such thing as right or wrong. It's just that if you don't have this natural sense of how to match the colors, how to make good composition, how to match designs, then if you follow these rules, you will definitely get into color match and you will definitely get an eye-catching design. But if you are lucky and you have this natural sense of how to use color, how to match them, then you probably will not need these rules. But that's what I did. I didn't have that natural sense, so I was simply following these rules and eventually, after time and practice, you will actually intuitively feel it. Okay, so now let's uh, repeat. Our first rule was follow the line. The second rule was two colors maximum. Uh, rule number three is cold and warm. Let me know if you have heard what is um, cold and warm tones or cool and warm colors. If you're a little bit familiar with the color theory, you might have heard it. If not, it's okay as well. I will explain. So it's pretty simple. Here's the same color wheel, just not as detailed as the previous one. It just has only one color range. And we need to simply divide it into two parts, just split them. And here we have warm colors, everything that lies on my left side. And here we have cool colors pretty easy. Okay, now is yellow warm or cool? If it's bright yellow, which is like, you know, orangey yellow, then it will be warm. But if we add a little green in it and it will be like more lime yellow, like cold yellow, then yes, this is already a cool color. The same with the violet. These two colors, yellow and purple, they lie in between of this border, so it really depends on what tone of violet and yellow there is. So if it's reddish violet, then it's warm. If it's more like blue violet and cold violet, then it's cool. So um, with the warm and cool, it's pretty easy. Now we're talking not only about rhinestones, but about background and rhinestones, okay? So you already have two rules of how to match colors between the rhinestones. Remember, follow the line, two colors maximum. And the next rule is about background and rhinestones. So if you want the colors to match, all you need to do is to take colors from one part. Cool with cool, warm with warm. Pretty easy. Also, there is a powerful tool I will show you right now how you, if you are in doubt, if you're like, okay, Anastasia told me that violet will match with a blue-green, but it looks kind of weird to me, I'm not sure. What can you do about it? Is you can take all rhinestone that you have, or, or not all, depends on you, and apply them on a clear tips. You see, that's just 
a few colors that I had. You can apply them just straight or do a, even do any design, it doesn't matter. And then I believe that all of you have a color chart that you, you know, show to your clients when they pick the color. And then what you will do is you need to select a color, let's say we'll take peach, and put this tip right on it. So you will actually see, all right, like this looks pretty cool. Or, and this, well, these are rainbow rhinestones, so <laughs> um, obviously they will look kind of cool with everything. Now let's take this pink one. And as you can see on this color, it's kind of hard to see them. Okay, this one looks a lot better. And yes, this one also seems like working. So it just, if you are not sure, if you want to see the final result, or I know there are some clients that are like, well, I want to see how it will look on my nails, then just take the samples. For example, also it works pretty good with the rhinestones that have, for example, these ones are rainbow, but they have empty bottoms. As you can see, there's no color on the bottom like there usually is. Uh, so they look really different, let me show you, like on a dark background, like here, on the brown, and let's try, I don't know, pastel yellow. You see, it looks uh, way different. So you can, mm, you know, mix and match, you just play with them around so you will understand. And also you have a, uh, your favorite particular design, let's say it would be like a heart or a triangle made of rhinestones, you can do it on a clear tip as well. Just simply above the tip, apply a top coat on it and place the rhinestones on it and cure. And then you have this kind of samples that you can try on your designs. Oh, and also it works not only with the designs, but not only with the rhinestones, but for example, this striping tape, which, which as you can see, doesn't really have color when it's on white, but once you put it on a black background, then yes, see it's, it's green. So you can do it not only to your rhinestone, but to all accessories that you have, so it will be easier. Okay, I hope this tip was helpful for you. All right. Um, now let's um, continue. So our rules were follow the line to colors max cold and warm. And the color uh, rule number four is the harmony. The harmony or the contrast principle, how I call them. Uh, so, okay, I'm afraid it was too early to put them away. So the contrast principle is pretty easy. It says that with the light colors, uh, so, okay, there's light and dark. It's, I believe that you understand what's light and dark. In case, if you're not sure, let me explain. So here's our original wheel. Mm -hmm. So the colors that are close to the white, they are light because they have a lot of white in it. And the colors that are close to the black circle, they are dark, pretty easy. So if you have a light background, you should take dark rhinestones and vice versa. If you have dark background, take light rhinestones, pretty easy. But if you have, uh, well, black and white, obviously is one of the most contrast and powerful color matches. So you can usually easily see white rhinestones on a black background, it works all the time. But in this case, we have this contrast. Contrast means these colors will pop. You will actually see this design from a distance. It's really eye-catching in what I call wow design. But also, sometimes there are such clients, I believe that you all have su such clients, that do not really want their nails to be seen from a far distance. They want something nude, natural, bridal maybe. Then, in this case, you can take the colors that are close near the wheel and do something, you know, more nude. Yes, this won't be seen from a distance, but it still looks nice, just a different style. So harmony or contrast rule, it works, but just always make sure you, that this client actually want it. It really depends on what they want to get at the end. Do they want actually contrast and bright effect or do they want something, you know, warm, soft, romantic.